just a quick and dirty um, kind of assessment of what happened. Um, after number one, Modern Games reared up and hit the back of the gate. Number two, Albahar uh, flipped over and became lodged underneath the starting gate. The scratch of number two was relayed to the stewards and that horse was taken out of the wagering pools and appears um, uninjured. The veterinary staff then relayed a second scratch, number one, Modern Games, based on initial observation to the stewards, um, who also removed that horse from the wagering pools. After further discussion and observing number one, Modern Games, that horse was declared fit and racing sound, and that fact was relayed to the stewards, who pursuant to CHRB rule 1974, allowed the horse to run for purse money only. The CHRB and Breeders Cup are reviewing current veterinary and scratching procedures to ensure that this uh, does not occur going forward. Um, I'm Scott Cheney, director of the California Horse Racing Board, um, equine medical director, um, Dr. Jeff Balea. Happy to answer so questions. So basically scratch and then unscratched. That's correct. That so rule references if an error is made, the stewards have the right to let the horse run for purse money only. What error was made? The horse was taken out of the, um, the wagering pools um, when it was racing sound. Who's the point person on the ground that called up for the stewards? The racing veterinarian. Who is that? Um, Dr. Dana Stead. Um, and as you know, there's a much larger veterinary team um, in but place for the, for the Breeders' Cup. Calls up? What's up? He's the one that calls up. It, uh, he is typically the one who calls up. Today it was um, Dr. Chuck Jenkins. Jenkins. Okay. Another Except regulatory vet on the ground. The, the name of the uh -huh. guy who called up? Um, Jenkins, first name Chuck, last name Jenkins, Chuck Jenkins. like okay, it Jenkins. sounds. And was he doing that all day? Was he the guy in charge we, all day? We have uh, three teams, Breeders' Cup veterinary teams. We have uh, one in the winter circle, one on the main track, and then one for the turf course. Dr. Jenkins was on a gator on the turf course, so he was managing the turf course uh, issues. Would you, uh, would, you, I'm sorry. would you say the situation is unique, or have you seen this happen? No, it's, I would say it's pretty unique. In typical racing, obviously there is one racing veterinarian in California, it's Dr. Stead, and he and the stewards have a pretty um, standardized procedure with how horses come out, so there aren't mistakes, right? He calls up, says the number, the name, and oftentimes the trainer, that's repeated back, and so there's no mistakes. In this case, that worked, right? It was just that the wrong horse, um, or, or, or the horse was prematurely radioed up to the stewards who took the horse out. Is there understanding why that call was made when it was? Yes. So what the incident that happened, the one horse reared backwards and hit the gate hard. When he did that, he caused the two horse to rear and get his legs over the front of the gate. So Dr. Stead and Dr. Jenkins were behind the gate. They saw the, the one horse rear hard and hit himself. And they saw the two horse upon which ended up underneath the gate. What they didn't know was there was an assistant starter that ran around and opened up the gate on the one horse and let the one horse out. They were under the impression the horse reared back the one horse and then busted through the front of the gate, further compounding that horse's health. So that was the reason the, the scratch was called in. After that, upon further consultation with the assistant starters, the information was relayed that they opened the gate and let the horse out. They then re-examined the horse and determined after consulting with the rest of the veterinary staff that the horse was uh, fit and healthy to race. So had they actually examined the horse before they called the stewards yeah, to say? They called the scratch in after they saw the horse rear back, hit the back of the gate, and were under the impression the horse lunged forward and hit the front of the gate as well. But they hadn't like backed him out and looked at him? Like, no, that horse had already, uh, already out. exited the front of the gate uh, per the assistant starter. Does that mean they also hadn't examined the horse yet? Correct. The scratch was made based on the way the horse flipped over backwards and under the assumption that he, he lunged forward and hit the front of the gate, possibly injuring himself as well. Right. So and as you know, they can, they can lunge forward, hit that gate, and you may have a shoulder stress fracture or humeral stress fracture that won't be identified until it happens in the race. So, you know, at the end of the day, um, everybody came out safe, including the two horse who got himself under the gate, uninjured. So it was like the jock saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, this horse is okay. I mean, how did it come about that maybe the horse needed to be looked at more? I don't know what the jock was saying, um, but based on the way the horse reared backwards and was under the assumption the way he lunged forward at that force, they run the assumption that he could be at risk. Right, but what makes the decision that that maybe he's not at risk and he should run? For that decision was made after they found out that the horse was manually exited out of the one hole and brought back around and examined by the veterinary team at the gate. 
the decision was made that the horse was uh, fit to race. Is it standard operating procedure to interview the jockey? I don't know, uh, not to my knowledge. So it's my, my, experience, that my experience has been that um, it, oftentimes they do talk to the jockey to get their impressions, um, but it's certainly not dispositive, right? As you can imagine, jockeys, especially in a race like this, want their horse to run. And oftentimes, um, racing veterinarians have to scratch the horse over the objections of jockeys. Everybody wants their horse to run until it gets hurt. Isn't that a rule uh, in California or a Breeders' Cup rule that if a horse breaks through the starting gate of three race, they're automatically scratched? The trainer represents that. There is no rule. That is at the discretion of the track veterinarian at the gate. So I'm trying to square the two things. Was it the idea that the horse broke through the gate that triggered the scratch without the exam, or the hitting of the head in the back that triggered the, the Both. scratch without the exam? The visual of the horse rearing back, hitting itself, and then the assumption based on what they saw from behind the gate that the horse lunged forward and hit the front of the gate, opening the gate. One, one other, do you know of any other circumstance where a horse was scratched in a situation like this without first being examined after being taken around to the gate? I do. I mean, obviously, my, in my previous life, I was a steward, and oftentimes, solely based upon the actions of the horse in the starting gate, it's pretty obvious that that horse should be taken out prior to any actual examination. Okay, thank you very much. When you say that they, there is a need to, or at least an effort now, to make sure this doesn't happen again, is there anything in specific you would say that is being looked at as far as the procedure right now to say, all right, this is where we screwed yeah. up and this is what we gotta fix? I don't wanna to speak for Dr. Blake because he's in charge, but I mean, I think it's fair to say that there's a massive effort of having lots of veterinarian, scru veterinarian scrutiny on these, on these horses in the Breeders' Cup. And so to be fair, there are um, lots of cooks in the kitchen right now. I think a possible solution would be to um, um, kind of solidify the, um, to one person who can, who can call in a scratch, right? Rather than have, you know, too many cooks in the kitchen, if you will. Is that a fair assessment? I, I think it's a fair statement. You know, between Breeders' Cup and Del Mar and the CHRB, uh, we go over and above for safety. Um, and these, you know, it's, these instances haven't been an ex jock myself. When these things happen in the gate, it's very quick. And time is standing still. You've got a horse underneath the gate. You've got 12 other horses in the gate with jocks on their back. And you're waiting for the next time bomb to go off. So, Not to mention the sun was setting and it's getting quite dark. Yeah. And, you know, so, you know, there's a lot of uh, tension. There's a lot of angst. And it, it, it's a very dynamic situation. And, I, I, you know, they examined the horse after finding out all the further details and found he was, he was fit and healthy to race. So. Does this end tonight, or will the CHRB do a further investigation of this incident? That's a good question. I mean, obviously, looking into it would probably be a good idea. To be fair, um, we're not uh, usually operate under these kind of enhanced veterinary procedures. So, in normal times, we would have one racing veterinarian, you know, making all of the determinations. So you wouldn't have a mis miscommunication, probably, um, you know, in, in this vein. And I, I think, you know, John, after every event like this, the Breeders' Cup, you, you do a post-mortem. And if there were instances where you could make improvements, I think you have to evaluate them and, and put them in place. So, you know, I think uh, the Breeders' Cup team, I know the CHRB, will look at instances where we succeeded and build upon those instances where we failed and try to find or find better solutions. And there's, there's such an emphasis on animal welfare, obviously, at this point in the Breeders' Cup, CHRB, Del Mar have um, done everything in their power to, you know, present safe races, which, by the way, happened today. And uh, fortunately, most horses, all the horses came back safe and sound. Um, this might be an example of trying too hard, right? When it was decided to let the horse run for purse money only, was that the steward's only option because of the rule? Uh, I mean, they could have left the horse scratched, of course. I mean, those were the two options. Okay. Uh, an option was not to put the horse back in the pool. I think, it, I don't want to be, I don't want to give you bad information, but the stewards on preliminary um, um, inquiry found out the horse was out, out of the pool about four minutes. So putting it back in on, on a race of this magnitude is simply not an option to be fair to the wagering public. Um, the competing interest, of course, is the uh, fairness to the connections, the owner, the trainer, and the jockey who have a horse out there who, you know, is racing sound um, and, and should be able to race. So it wasn't an option to just make an announcement and say we'll give everyone like 10 more minutes? Well, I think, I think that would, I mean, 
the sewers probably can do that under the rules, um, but this rule is pretty specific, 1974, um, when an error is made of this, of this magnitude. To give another 10 minutes also would be a little bit problematic in terms of like the sunset, because the other thing, the other consideration was, as everyone pro probably could see, it was getting quite dark. There had already been a substantial delay, so another 10 or 15 minutes to be fair for wagering public to switch bets probably would have been have the, you ever least heard favorable of action. a horse taken out i've never heard of a horse that scratched being allowed to go back in i bet you hear that the tote maybe the mistakes before the races start I, i've never heard of them i have heard of that when it happens early in the morning um and it's you know the horse is out for 30 seconds or something not when the horse is on the track when <laughs> hundreds of million dollars are bet on a, on a race and put it back in again. Yeah, yeah, it, it hasn't yet, happened yet the tote board still even after the scratch was announced still reflected the pool totals and win odds they were never taken down until the announcement was made that he would only be running for purse money so can you explain that i can't i don't have the answer to that so, question right now i don't think so, so was it was the tote shut that, i mean did, was was the scratch made for betting purposes but then reopened or no no the the scratch was made for betting purposes meaning the horse was removed from the pools uh, money on single race wagers was refunded, and of course, um, you know how multiple race wagers work. Um, and so then the the horse was out of the race, of the the pools is my but, understanding. I mean, the money and was changing on the board. It, it was all I, the way I, until I, the second announcement. Obviously, this happened an hour and a half ago. I can't tell you um, like why that occurred or whether there's some delay. And my experience as a steward in the past has been that um, you know it takes a cycle or two for the horse to actually come out. Um, on the pools, right? It's not instantaneous, for example. Who can do 